Greg, I want to look forward. Uh, in recent time, FIFA sent a letter to all the nations about just focusing on the game, and yet your group under your tutelage has been very outspoken on social issues. How do you reconcile those two during this tournament? It, it, there's a balance, right? I think first and foremost, we're there for football. Mm -hmm. um, that's clear. The World Cup is there. We didn't put it there, but we're there to, to do well for the fans. We're do, there to do well for our country. That's first and foremost. Secondly, though, is we're all humans. And um, with the be the change that the guys created, it basically gives every individual the opportunity to, to voice um, how they feel about social issues. And we've done it before with um, social injustices. We've done it with gun control. And we'll do it again with in Qatar. So I have, um, for me, it's like in 2014, I remember we went over there into Brazil and we put the pressure on that we wanted to win the first game against Ghana. How much or how important is for you guys to go to Qatar and try to get the first win against Wales? I think the first game is, um, is crucial. Um, from my experience in the World Cup in, in 2002, we set up the group by beating Portugal. And um, in, in 2006, we lost the first game and it put us in a hole. So the first game is crucial. Having said that, there are examples, and I went through uh, the World Cup in 2018, there are examples of teams not winning their first game and advancing on. So, you know, for us, it's, we want to get the win, of course. We want to get a point, at least from the game. But we'll be, will, we'll be ready to adapt if we don't. Yeah, and since 1994, to Jermaine's point, 84% of the teams that won the first game advanced. So there is a huge part to that. Greg, I'm just curious. Is this what you envisioned? when you took this job, this process, going through it? You've been through a lot, COVID and going through this. Was it what you envisioned? Was it better? Was it worse? Was it more difficult? Or, or are you pumped to be on the plane at 1.30 a.m. tonight? No, you know, I, I think um, it's enjoyable. And when you see guys, you know, I couldn't have predicted that Serginho Dest was going to be um, on the World Cup team. I couldn't pre predicted that Yunus Musa was going to be a guy that's on the World Cup team. I, you can't predict how the, the, the players progress. And when I see this young group, uh, the amount of progress they made, individually and as a team, I'm excited to get on that plane. You know, Craig, um, for me, it wasn't from, from day one when, when, when you took over for the job. I said, I think you're the, the best fit for this young group, you know, because of the ideas you had in, in the game, the philosophies and the style of play. Do you think with this young group we can go over there and we can surprise a lot of countries? We're going to find out. You think out, he's going to say no? <laughs> <laughs> well, in fairness, we did on ESPN FC in 14 and we were all wrong. So obviously Jermaine yeah. just wanted to bring that up. No, we're going to find out. I mean, I think it's important that we go over um, to Qatar and we, we represent our identity as a team. It's not time to, to change who we are. We're an aggressive team, a high-pressing team. We want to we want to use the ball, and um, we're going to find out if we can be successful doing that. So, Greg, tell us what the next 12 days look like for this team going forward. Excuse me. What do the next 12 days look like for the team? Yeah, you know, we're the guys. We'll have the f entirety of the team in by the 14th, and then it's about yeah, exactly. And then it's about training sessions um, and ramping up to the first game of Wales on the 21st. Greg, I'm not going to let you go without asking you to help me define success for this team. In your mind, what is going to define a successful World Cup for a World Cup team under Greg Berhalter? Okay. No, it, you know, um, the way we're looking at this, Taylor, and, and you've heard me say this before, is literally two different tournaments. Yep. We have a group stage tournament that we want to be in the top two to earn the right to play in the knockout tournament. Yep. And if we do that, um, you know, anything can happen on any given day. And all you want to do in the knockout tournament is play your best possible game. And if you happen to go out and you play your best possible game, you go out with your head held high. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.